Hi, welcome back to Love Your Life with me, Chris Tackett. Um, today we're going to talk about the healing template. And first I wanted to let you know that if you want to find me, you can now find me on Psychology Today's website. Um, I'm now listed as one of their life coaches slash counselors. Um, so if you need more information about me, you can go to their website at psychologytoday.com or you can always email me at catacket at hotmail.com. And um, I appreciate any feedback. I really uh, like to learn and grow from what people need from me. Uh, and that's where this, what we're going to talk about today came from, is I've been asking some of my women's groups and um, some of my clients what they really want to work on. And the answer is very often said in sort of a shameful way. And so I thought this really needs to be talked about because uh, I don't believe anyone should live in shame. Guilt's okay, but shame is not. So what we're talking about today is anger. And what we're going to talk about is the healing template for anger. And when we're talking about anger, first of all, I want you to understand what anger is. And we've all felt anger before. Um, we know what that feeling is. But what you might not understand is that anger in, a, in, a, in and of itself is not a bad thing. Anger serves a purpose. It helps us release deeper conflicts. And it's sort of like a pressure release valve. But it's not always very efficient at releasing um, pressures. But anger is a frustration and survival mixed emotion. So when you're in an angry place, it's that frustration and how am I going to survive brings up anger. The other piece about, and this is how I like to look at anger, is anger shows that you care about something. So that's where I want to go with this, is looking at anger from a place of, how can I show I care in a better, more effective way? And how can I heal that anger and the scars of anger for myself? So um, here's the thing, though. You cannot heal anger until you allow yourself to feel the vulnerability and the hurt. Here's the pattern that we all go through when we're having anger. It goes like this. It goes anger, hiding hurt, hiding healing, hiding the love. And if we can get through that anger and feel some of that hurt, then we start to heal and then we let in more love. So that's when we got to get brave. And we have to start feeling vulnerable and allowing vulnerability to be okay. And vulnerability is that uncertainty, that I feel like I'm taking a risk feeling, that I'm being emotionally exposed feeling, that's vulnerable and that's scary because a lot of us have had experience when we were having an emotion and someone exploited that or didn't treat us kindly when we were being vulnerable, which then sends all that anger and hurt deep down, okay? So for you, if you're ready to start healing, I want you to decide to give it up and start making this about you and not about them. So we got to realize that anger protects our vulnerability. And when you allow that feeling of hurt, you will feel vulnerable. But if, if we're going to work on this, please make sure that you have some kind of strong support person, whether it's a, a mom or a dad or a really good friend who will be respectful of your vulnerability or a psychologist, psychiatrist, counselor, life coach, somebody who can be that safe person for you to start 
feeling some of these hurt feelings and provide you with empathy because empathy is the antidote to shame. So we want to find some kind of empathy also for ourselves. It's okay to feel empathetic towards your own situation and nurture that because most of us started with these anger issues in childhood from some unfair things that happened to you in childhood. So feel empathetic towards that child and then say, and now it's not about them and what they did to me then, it's about me and how I'm gonna move forward from here, okay? So let's get ready to break this pattern of anger, hurt, healing, and love and move through this to the healing and love part, okay? So the first thing I want you to do is write a letter about who you want to be and then commit yourself to being that person, okay? So that's going to be your homework at the end of this whole thing is I want you to sit down and write that letter to yourself saying all the things that you want to be in your life and then commit yourself to working on this so that you can get there, okay? And here's the thing, the reason you're not getting what you want, that job that you keep applying for, the friends that you want, the um, loving relationships that you want, the children that you want, the behaviors you want, the reason you're not getting those things is not because of your reasons or your excuses, it's because of your attitude, okay? So nothing, let's be really clear, Nothing will ever be like it was. And don't we always say that? Don't you hear that a lot? God, I wish it was like it was when I was here or at that age or at that stage in my life. I wish it was like that again. Well, the honest truth is it's never going to be like it was because now you have experience and growth and wisdom from your experiences it can't be the same. It just can't. And so I want you to think about it like driving a car. When you're driving, you use the rear view mirror to glimpse the past. It's small, so you can catch glimpses of the past. But you let the windshield that's big guide you where you're going, and that's how it should be. So we want to stop looking at the past so much, like most of us do. We gauge everything from our past. Let's start looking out the windshield and gauging our futures by what's ahead of us. Okay. So now you have this wisdom and this experience, so what are you going to do with this next piece of your life? And that's where that letter comes in. What do you want to be? What do you want the next piece of your life to look like? What's in front of your windshield? Okay. You only have to decide where you're going to place your energy right now. Not where it's been or not where it's going to be, but where do you want to place your energy right now? And remember as you're doing this that negativity is very, very contagious, as is positivity. But how many times have you decided, I'm going to start my day off bright and shiny, and you get to work and you hear all your coworkers around the water cooler complaining about what the boss has done or how much works on their desks or the weather or their drive in or whatever, you know, and everybody starts chiming in with negativity. Well, as you're in the early stages of this, realize and think about you do not have to participate in that. You can, when you start to hear that negative stuff go on, choose to leave. You don't have to choose to add to it because when you feed what they're talking about because you want to feel like part of the group, I know, I've been there, I get that. Um, but when you start feeding that, you're feeding all the negativity inside of you and it becomes this big snowball effect and you feel more negative. So excuse yourself. Go to the bathroom, go get some coffee, go have some important phone call you have to make, whatever it is, but don't participate in it. And as you start erasing some of those negative influences in your life, 
and start adding just a few more positive ones in, things will start to change and you'll find that as we chip away at this, that anger is naturally cut down by chipping away at some of that negative stuff that's already in your life. So the other thing I want you to recognize is none of this happens fast, okay? Healing takes time. You know, think of a broken bone. You break your leg, you're going to be hung up and working on it and healing it for six to eight weeks at least, usually. And then sometimes you still have more rehab after that. So it's not going to happen fast, but you should see some immediate results, if that makes sense to you. You'll see some changes occurring immediately as you put yourself into a new mentality. But the overall change is not going to happen fast, okay? So be patient with yourself. It's okay. And forgiveness is a very necessary piece to all of this healing anger, okay? So we must decide that we're going to forgive those who've trespassed against us right? Those who've done things that have wronged us, said things, hurt us physically, all of those things, we've got to decide we're going to forgive them. Forgiveness, and somebody put it this way to me once, and it, it just, ah, because usually what we think of is if we say, I forgive you, it means it was okay. But forgiveness doesn't mean it was okay. Forgiveness is a decision. So it's, that saying about um, anger is like you drink the poison and wait for someone else to die. You decide to stop drinking the poison. It's a decision. Trust is what keeps everybody uh, in anger and, and not trusting and having difficulty forming trusting relationships. That's the problem because trust is a construction and you have to build trust and it takes a lot of tools and relationship time to build trust. And we'll talk about trust in another episode. Um, so you have to forgive because once you decide to forgive, it frees you up to feel your true anger and your true hurt. And that's really uncomfortable. See, anger's easy. Anger's really easy, you know, but it hides a lot. And this is where our troubles start. They start from anger. So when you decide to forgive, you free yourself up, you will feel the anger, you will feel the hurt, you will feel vulnerable, you will feel scared, and that's hard, okay? And that's why I said let's have a support system in place for those hard moments. See, most of us, many of us, some people show their anger outwardly. You know, we know them. We see them yelling, fighting, hitting, screaming abusive words. You know, we see them. A lot of us shove our anger down deep because we don't think it's acceptable to be angry. And so we hide it. And this leads to spiritual dis-ease. And these are things like depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, prolonged grief, low self-esteem, feelings of intense overwhelmness, you know, spiritual disease. So when we allow that anger to come up and actually recognize the things that are making us feel angry, then we can address it, we can feel the hurt, and we can move forward. Okay, so let's stop being attacked and imprisoned by our own energy and connect with our anger in order to alter it into something else. So here's a technique that I use with some of my clients to connect with anger and begin the healing process. Again, remember, this isn't going to work in a one, one shot. This takes time to finesse and to work through and to um, get 
okay with. So the first thing is to take a deep breath in and really allow yourself to feel the anger, okay? And then just look at it. And remember, you're feeling angry because you care about something, you know? Um, the last time I started to feel angry, um, my daughter was being really loud and boisterous, and she wasn't being a problem, but she was just loud, and I was trying to work. And so she was interrupting my time, and she was trying to get my attention, and I started to feel angry because I cared about my work that I was trying to do at that moment, but I also cared about her and paying attention to her, and I couldn't reconcile the two at that time, I was feeling frustrated and I was feeling, um, well, mostly frustrated. And how am I going to survive, right? How am I going to survive this? Okay. And I took a deep breath. And this is step two. I asked myself, can I resolve this problem that's causing me anger right now? Can I resolve this problem right now? Well, absolutely I could, okay? So I, instead of, because I took the time to let my anger settle down before I just blurted out, stop it, stop it, why are you being so loud? Leave me alone, you know, all those things we want to yell at, our, at the offender, right? I took time to look at my anger. Why am I starting to feel this way? Took a deep breath formulated a plan about how can I fix this? Is there something I can do about it right now? Yes. So I talked to my daughter and said, you know, mommy's working right now. Can you please give me 15 minutes of quiet time? Go in your room or outside or someplace else. Give me 15 minutes to finish up and then I'll be able to pay attention to you. And you know what? It was like magic. She did it. I spent my 10 minutes because it took me less time because she wasn't in the room distracting me, right? It took me 10 minutes, I finished up, and then we were, had extra time to play together. So it was a win-win situation for both of us. And I never let my anger show to her and write onto her blank slate. So she didn't know ever that, that mommy was feeling frustrated and angry. Okay, because we do, we love to, to feed our anger to someone else. So take a deep breath, feel the anger, decide, look at it, decide what is it that my anger is trying to tell me? What am I caring so much about right now? Then step two, what can I do to fix it? Is there anything I can do right now? And sometimes the answer is going to be no. There's nothing I can do about it because it happened in my past or the problem is so large, um, you know, the way the healthcare system is or something like that. The problem is so large, there's nothing I can do about it right now, then let it go, okay? Or if, if you feel that passionately about it, then you decide to take an action in your community or in whatever area you can. I work with women who are um, a, victims of domestic abuse. They can't do anything about what happened to them in the past, but we talk about what can you do now, right now, to alleviate some of that. And many of them have formed Facebook groups. They go volunteer at battered women's shelters. They do things for the community to give back and to give other women help and hope. And that helps them work through their anger because instead of being angry, they're fighting it with good deeds, okay? So the next thing is sometimes when you look at your anger, it's about something that you're feeling guilty about. If you're feeling guilty about something, forgive yourself. Decide that you're going to forgive and build new trust with your new skills. You know, there's that old saying, when I know better, I do better. Well, now you know better, so now you can do better. But back then, you didn't know better, okay? So forgive yourself for where you were then. You did the best you could. Now move on, okay? 
but you have to be willing to, first of all, hold this anger and look at it, okay? And if you can't resolve it immediately, let it go and resolve the smaller issues that you can deal with right now. Remember, chipping away at that anger over time naturally releases and destroys that bigger iceberg of anger. Holding on to expectations, lies, issues, shoulds, all of those things will make this a really long road for you in, in putting a halt to feeling so much overwhelming anger. So let go of some of your expectations, some of your shoulds, some of the lies you're telling yourself, okay? Let go of allowing other people's behaviors, bad behaviors, to irk you. They're not your responsibility anymore. Let go of that. Focus on you. And once you turn your focus on to you and putting good out into the world and not what everybody else is doing, anger also st starts to dissipate. Okay? Remember that everybody's on their own journey, most of which you don't know anything about. So if you can... Keep reminding yourself of that when somebody's rude to you, cuts you off, cusses at you, acts, comes out at you in anger. They're on their own journey. And none of that is about you. Okay? And so remind yourself they're on their own journey. I'm going to pass on good to them. I'm going to smile at them. I'm going to see what I can do to help them through, to be nice to them, to be calm. And those things help cut down your anger. So the moral of what we talked about today is stop painting over dead wood. Strip away those old layers of paint because we've covered up all this festering wounds with all of this pretty or all of this anger. You know, you may like or not like the color you're painting over, but you're covering it all up. Stop doing it and let go of your history so that you can start stepping into your destiny and stop looking back because if you're looking back then you're not available for today so be available for yourself today in this moment right now and right now i want you to go grab your pen and paper and start writing that letter about who you want to be and then commit to being that person thank you so much for joining me today